Good day everyone. Welcome back to our class. Today we want to talk about simple harmonic motion. Now, what is simple harmonic motion? I'm going to give an example before I just give an illustration. I'm going to use a simple pendulum as an example. Now, if you displace a simple pendulum to a certain angle theta and you leave it, you realize that the simple pendulum comes back to this point before it moves to another point here so it comes before it moves to another point then from here it comes again to this point before it moves to this point and whilst it is moving because of gravity at each of the sides gravity will slow down the motion to the point where it finally settles at this point now this point is what we call the fixed point of the motion okay and there is a kind of force or there is a force that is always trying to move the object towards this fixed point and we call that force the restoring force so the restoring force is the force that is moving an object back to its original position okay good now simple harmonic motion is dealing with objects or simple harmonic motion is the motion of an object from a fixed point to another point okay so let's say i have another object or the same object at a certain point a here and then it covers a distance x in meters and moves to another point b here now in moving from here to here it accelerates so it uses a certain acceleration before it covers the distance okay good now once it is moving to the side here it has to return back to the side okay so for simple harmonic motion it is the motion of an object whose acceleration is always directed towards a fixed point. It is the motion of an object whose acceleration is always directed towards a fixed point and whose acceleration is directly proportional to its displacement so from the motion or from the examples that i've given you realize that the body moves from here to here it has gone through a certain displacement but there is a restoring force that is trying to bring or that brings the body back to its original position and without the acceleration which gives us f is equal to m a there is no restoring force so the acceleration is what gives the body its restoring force and therefore we can say that the acceleration is bringing the object back to its original position so the displacement is in this direction and the acceleration is in the opposite direction so even though the acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement x we can say that the acceleration is proportional to negative x since the acceleration is opposite to the displacement and therefore a can be equal to k or negative kx but our constant k is equal to omega squared so that a becomes equal to minus omega squared x i think those of us who have been following the lecture we know that omega is our angular frequency which is also called our angular velocity so omega is our angular frequency and it's also called our angular velocity now any object that undergoes simple harmonic motion can be represented by a curve this way okay so the displacement x which is in meters against time t is represented by a curve this way so that this curve starting from zero going this way is what represents the motion of an object undergoing simple harmonic motion if you look at this graph well you see that from here up to here is half of a circle so if i want to compare this graph to a circle it's the center from here and if an object starts from this side and moves to here it has covered quarter of the circle if it moves from here to here it has covered half of the circle it is the same with simple harmonic motion in that when an object moves from here to here that's covered half from here to here that's covered a full circle so we can say that the distance from here to here 
is pi, which is equal to 180 degree. And from here is 2 pi, which is 360 degree. So this is a little comparison that we can do as far as simple harmonic motion and circular motion is concerned. Okay, so in most cases or in our lectures, you realize that most lecturers or most teachers move straight from circular motion to simple harmonic motion because of the relations and because they are similar and most of the characteristics of circular motion are always in simple harmonic motion. Okay, so from here, we are just going to write an equation. So let us just write an equation to represent Okay, so we are moving on to an equation to represent simple harmonic motion. Like I said, this is our graph. So suppose we have an object that starts from the zero point, the distance x in meters. So the object moves in this curve in a time of what t seconds. We can say that the displacement x is equal to a sine multiplying omega t plus theta. Let me just use theta. Now the x is the displacement of the object. S is the displacement of the object. A is called the amplitude. The amplitude or it is also called the maximum displacement. A is the amplitude which is also called the maximum displacement. We know omega already, which is the angular velocity. T is time. Then theta. From this equation, theta is called the initial phase angle. Theta is called the initial phase angle. Now, theta determines where the graph starts. So if I'm starting a graph from here, then it means that I'm starting a graph from my zero point, okay? So for a graph like this, if I want to rewrite this equation, then the equation can be x is equal to a sine omega t plus zero, which can be equal to x or which can also, so x can also be equal to a sine just omega t, okay? Because of the initial phase. So the initial phase angle t that determines where the graph is supposed to start from. Okay, as we move on, I'll explain certain things. So that if theta is equal to 90 degrees, then our graph can be redrawn as, so 90, if the graph will start this way, and then go this way. So you see that this is zero, this is our 90 point. So determine, also depending on what the value of theta is, that is where you determine how to start your graph, okay? So theta is called the initial phase angle, and then the whole set here, omega t plus theta is called the phase angle. So omega t plus theta is called the phase angle. Let us please take a look at this equation. We are going to be deriving a lot of other equations from x is equal to a sine omega t plus theta. The first thing that we will derive or the first equation that we are going to derive from it is the velocity. Okay, so we know that s is equal to a sine omega t plus theta, and we want velocity. Velocity is displacement all over time. Okay, so to get the velocity, we say velocity is equal to dx all over t. So we are going to be differentiating this with respect to x. So we have d of into bracket a sine omega t plus psi all over dt. So the velocity becomes equal to some. Now, since we are differentiating x with respect to time, it is only the quantity that is closer or that is nearest to the time that is going to be affected. Okay, so here, if you are differentiating x with respect to time, the quantity here that is going to be affected is omega. So what happens is that omega comes out and joins with a, then the sign changes to cos then what is in the bracket remains in the bracket this way okay so the velocity v for simple harmonic motion is omega a cos of omega t plus what sign but we can have what we call maximum velocity and what happens is that at maximum velocity at maximum velocity now since this is a cost function 
the only time this is going to be maximum so is when this course because course start from one up to zero and then the other negatives okay so the only time that this is going to be maximum is when this whole thing that is cos of omega t plus psi is equal to one so it implies that for v maximum we can say that cos of omega t plus psi is all equal to one and therefore v maximum is equal to omega a so this is how you derive your equation for maximum velocity so for maximum velocity we can say that v is equal to omega a this is our maximum velocity and let us draw a graph for that so if i want to draw a graph for this then this is my velocity okay this is my velocity in meters per second this is my time in seconds okay so the maximum displacement so for this graph these are the positive aspects and then these are the negative aspects so looking at the equation now the identities that is coming here before the course or the variables that are coming before the course is what we represent or we use as our maximum displacement and therefore from this graph our maximum displacement which is our amplitude here or let me call let me just call it maximum displacement is going to be omega a and at this side we are going to have negative omega a and therefore for a velocity time graph in a simple harmonic motion if i have a graph this way and i write v in meters per second and i write time in seconds and i write a value of let's say 10 here then it implies that and this side is negative 10 that it implies that 10 is equal to omega a okay so that if i want the amplitude then the amplitude is going to be 10 over omega so for a velocity time graph in simple harmonic motion the maximum displacement is omega a however if it is a displacement time graph this way this is my x and then this is my time in seconds this is my x in meters then i draw a graph this way then the maximum displacement is only this factor which is the amplitude for for a displacement time graph in simple harmonic motion the maximum displacement is the amplitude but for a velocity time graph in simple harmonic motion the maximum displacement is omega a that is the angular velocity multiplying the amplitude so we quickly move on to acceleration now acceleration is velocity all over time so our a is going to be dv over dt so a becomes equal to d multiplying omega a cos of omega t plus psi in brackets all over dt so the a becomes equal to now what is happening here is that here the a becomes equal to this comes back again so it becomes omega squared a now the cos changes to sign but anytime cos changes to sign it comes with a negative so minus omega squared a sine of omega t plus psi now here again for a to become maximum it means that sine of omega t plus psi should be equal to one it implies that a maximum is equal to minus omega squared a so this is our equation for acceleration where this is the amplitude of the maximum for displacement okay now let us look at this equation so we have this equation we have this other equations and then we have also v is equal to omega a so this is our equation for velocity and this is our equation for acceleration okay so a graph of acceleration in meters per second squared against time for this the maximum displacement here is, is equal to omega squared a and at this side is negative omega squared a so whatever value that you are getting here is a negative aspect good now the other equation or the last equation that i want us to talk about here is velocity the velocity can also be equal to omega multiplying square root of a squared minus x squared now this happens when you have an object okay an object 
let's say x in meters or s in meters and then t in seconds so we have an object this is our maximum displacement x so anytime you have x and then t the maximum displacement is a okay so assuming an object is moving or going through this distance okay or this curve and the object gets to a certain point x here okay so you see that this point x is not the maximum displacement and therefore the object will have a maximum displacement and then it will have a distance x for which it has reached at a certain time okay so anytime the object gets to a point x and not the amplitude then in your question you are going to be given the distance the object has got into and the amplitude and in that you are supposed to be using this equal to omega square root of a squared minus s squared let us see how we can just derive this equation briefly okay so in deriving our equation v is equal to omega square root of a squared minus x squared we are going to take note of the first and then the second equations here a for the first one for displacement and b the second equation for velocity okay now let's apply some trigonometry so from trigonometry we all know that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to one and therefore if i want cos squared theta is going to be one minus sine squared for theta therefore cos theta is going to be equal to square root of one minus sine squared theta okay now let us keep this so we are going to replace the cos theta with cos omega t plus psi so it means that cos of omega t plus psi is equal to square root of one minus sine squared omega t plus psi this is what it means right good so it implies that from equation two we can say that v is equal to omega a multiplying square root of one minus sine squared omega t plus psi so we can have this for our velocity